What's up guys, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and today we're going to be talking about a topic that I don't really like talking about but I think it's really really important because I see a lot of um, I guess newer tarantula owners in tarantula groups wondering what the hell is going on with their spider. So today we're going to be talking about dyskinetic syndrome also known as DKS. So why is knowing about DKS important? So knowing about a syndrome like this is really critical because a lot of us get into the tarantula hobby because we want a really cool pet that is low maintenance and tarantulas very much fit that bill. Their care, their enclosures, their food is pretty affordable and it can be very easy to take care of if you only have a few of them. Um, so it's very easy to manage. Um, unfortunately with a pet like this, when it comes to illnesses and injuries, things get a little more complicated. Now the upside to having a pet like this is that they usually don't get sick. You know, they don't smell bad. They don't really get illnesses like cats or dogs. So, I mean, Spidey costs me nothing compared to the vet bills of my jealous cat who needs to go to the vet every three months for all of her stuff. But, you know, unfortunately, there aren't really tarantula vets or doctors. Um, so the thing about that is while you're saving a lot of money on vet bills and stuff like that, there's also really no one to help you in case something does go wrong. And learning about a syndrome like DKS is important because even if you do by chance have access to a exotics doctor or someone who knows a lot about tarantulas like or are in a tarantula forum or Facebook group, or even if you yourself know a lot about tarantula first aid and what to do to help your spider out if an emergency happens, nothing stands a chance against dyskinetic syndrome. Sadly, while many tarantula injuries and ailments can be treated successfully, this particular syndrome is pretty much like a death sentence for tarantulas. We have not found a cure. We have not really found a true cause of this either. What is dyskinetic syndrome or DKS? DKS is a disease of the central nervous system. It displays itself in a series of things that can include a loss of coordination, jerky movements, and an inability to do uh, things that it needs to survive, such as eat and drink. And if you've ever seen a video of this, um, you know when you see it because you really can't forget it. Um, it's unfortunately very disturbing to watch. It makes me very uncomfortable and sad every time I see a tarantula suffering with this. But it's really important for you to watch at least one of these videos so that you know the signs in case this happens to one of your tarantulas. And I'm going to link a video by Tom's Big Spiders of his own tarantula going through this. And I think this is important because this disease can happen to even the most experienced of tarantula owners. And it is not even the fault of a tarantula owner. You know, someone as experienced as Tom Moran from Tom's Big Spiders can even come across this unfortunate thing. And like I said, we don't really know what causes it. There are a lot of theories that chemicals and pesticides have something to do with why this disease develops in some tarantulas, but we still don't really have any proof of this. A lot more studies need to be done to determine this, but that's the most common theory about how this develops in tarantulas. Tom Moran described DKS as this. It is a type of neurological issue that causes the tarantula to lose coordination, leading to the spastic and jerky movements. It is thought to have many possible causes, including pesticide exposure, um, extreme temperatures and possibly mold. Unfortunately, in most reported cases of DKS, this proves to be fatal. And uh, there are there's another really experienced tarantula owner who's also um, had to deal with DKS and their tarantula died as well, and that is Jasper's Jungle. And I'm also going to leave a link to her video below, um, and which can also be useful because sometimes it does look a little bit different depending on how the disease has progressed. Um, as well as what kind of tarantula it is. So it's useful to watch both of those videos. Um, you know, symptoms are similar. You'll see jerky movement. The tarantula doesn't really seem to have any control over its body. It's very sad to watch. And unfortunately, as the disease progresses, it usually takes the tarantula within a few days. And because this disease is fatal, a lot of tarantula owners have to make the very, very difficult decision to put their tarantula out of their misery because obviously the tarantula is suffering. Now, of course, you can let the tarantula go through its own demise and let the disease take them, but for many tarantula owners, this is far too uncomfortable of a thought. 
And um, so we choose to euthanize the tarantula ourselves. And there are many different ways to do this if you ever wanna do research on it. I've definitely written a lot about this in my tarantula guide, which you can access through my website. So there's a lot of resources on this. Hopefully one day we will have a cure, but right now we don't actually know enough about this disease to even know the causes of how to protect our tarantulas against this. But there are a few things you can do just to be on the very, very safe side. Since we do believe that some of what is causing this could be pesticides or chemicals. So one of the things that you can do, since we don't know, we can't pinpoint the exact cause, is that if one of your tarantulas develops this disease and you have other tarantulas that are around them, you need to quarantine this tarantula and get them away from the other tarantulas. And you should also do complete enclosure changes on all of them. Because in case it's something that was in the air in the room or on the substrate or something like that, you wanna make sure that this disease doesn't spread and that it does not um, affect any of the other tarantulas if it's something that was in the air or something. Um, so, you know, we don't really know if this is super contagious or not, but the things that might've caused the illness um, might affect other tarantulas too. So you wanna make sure that all the tanks are clean and that the contaminated enclosure and the spider that's affected has been moved away from the other tarantulas. And the other thing that you can do, since we do believe that um, things like chemicals and pesticides cause this, as well as perhaps even smoke, like chemicals from smoke and stuff, um, you wanna be very diligent about where you're keeping your tarantulas tank and what chemicals might be getting around them. So things like candles, air fresheners, uh, sprays in the room, cleaning chemicals, um, even smoke if you are a smoker. You wanna make sure that none of that is actually around your tarantula's tank, just in case that the chemicals or something that is in these sprays or the smoke or whatever actually comes in contact with your tarantula and might cause this disease. And if your tarantula does develop this disease, you must be easy with yourself because we all make mistakes and you know there's no solid, definite, evidence on this to prove what causes dyskinetic syndrome. So, you know, we all make mistakes and I myself, you know, before I did this research, I would put uh, candles in your Spidey's enclosure all the time or air fresheners and I didn't know, but now that I do know better, you know, I'm much more conscious about if I'm spraying some spray around the room to make it smell nice, I make sure that it's not happening anywhere near Spidey anymore. I'm also very careful about the cleaning products that I use in her tank. Um, and making sure that I have washed all of that away before I put her back in her enclosure. So doing these little things may just um, reduce your risk a little bit more, or it may not. We don't know if that stuff's actually causing it, but better safe than sorry. You know, this disease is fatal. There's not much you can do about it or anything you can do about it once your tarantula gets this disease. So you might as well take all the precautions that you can. Anyway, guys, this was not a fun topic to research. You know, thinking about our tarantulas getting this disease is not something that we want to think about. But it's good to be prepared, and it's good to know that there are some things you can do to at least be super, super, super safe. Anyway, guys, if you have any experience with DKS or have any theories about what causes this, um, please let me know in the comments. I think it's really, really useful that we learn from our observations and our own experiences and share those um, because a lot of what information that we have about tarantulas and the diseases and stuff that affects them is through other tarantula owners' observations. So thank you so much for watching and educating yourself about this too, um, it's very, especially for the newer tarantula owners. It's important that you know about this. Anyway, if you have any other ideas about other videos you'd like to see about tarantula ailments or things that affect tarantulas, um, let me know because I love doing research on this stuff and I love to share information that is really useful for especially the newer tarantula owners. But anyway guys, thanks for watching and if you want more information from me, you can subscribe to my Tarantula Tuesday newsletter on my website tarantulaheaven.com and you can also get my full tarantula guide if you want to learn more about um, tons of tarantula topics and the full scope of tarantula care um, and I do kind of talk about this a lot more but anyway thank you for watching and I hope that you and your spiders have a very healthy and lovely week bye